those of you in the stream right now, not sure if you've been on our site before, um, or if not, if you just found us today, possibly. Uh, but we work with breeders all around the country. We do a lot of vetting and screening to make sure that they're top notch. Um, you're going to get a feel for that today uh, with Jennifer and, and her puppies. Uh, we have a safe platform for payments because we know how many scams are out there these days. These are some of the things that we want to at least educate you on and support you in this decision to adopt a puppy. Um, so Jennifer, I'm going to throw the microphone to you and give you a chance to introduce yourself. Go ahead and talk about the mini hippos and your decision to breed uh, this awesome mix. Hi guys, uh, my name's Jennifer and these are, here's one, there's, I don't know if you can see them, they're sleeping in the background. <laughs> the cutest. Um, so I live in Oklahoma. I've been breeding for about nine years. I started out with Great Danes and ultimately bought my first Sharpe, purebred Sharpe. Um, it was just an impulse buy. It wasn't, it wasn't well thought out decision. Unfortunately, it's embarrassing to admit. Unfortunately, the one that we had got he did have a genetic disorder. It's called Sharpe auto-inflammatory disease. Yeah. And he passed. It was a devastating loss for me. And it really struck a passion in me um, to try to find a way to breed a healthier breed of dog. And um, I stumbled across the mini hippo. I just fell in love immediately and started researching. And um, I've just been hooked on it ever since. Yeah, you know, you say it's kind of embarrassing that you, you know, in hindsight, maybe didn't make what you'd consider the best decision. And that's what we're here for. And that's what you're here for now, right? As a breeder and, and as a platform that wants to make sure that people are making the right decision, they're finding the right puppy that's going to fit their lifestyle. So on that note, can you talk a little bit about the mini hippo? Um, first, talk about the two breeds that you mix with, um, why you do that for the genetic purposes and the health purposes, and then the right lifestyle or the best type of home that they would fit in. It all goes back to genetic health issues um, and what we're seeing with mini hippos. So like if you're a Cocker Spaniel person or, you or you're you familiar with the breed, uh, you would know they're very prone to things like cherry eye, which is the, just the inflammation of their third eyelid. Um, as well as ear infections. That's a major thing with Cocker Spaniels. Um, and it's kind of the same with Sharpe is uh, ear infections. Sharpe's have these tiny, tiny little ears and they're almost like spring loaded down. I mean, you like try to pick it up, it just immediately. And then the Cocker Spaniel has the just really large droopy ear and there's not a lot of sunlight air getting in there. Um, so with those breeds mixed together, uh, you're, you get these perfect, just medium sized ears. So we've kind of, you know, are really eradicated those ear infections. We're not seeing, um, near as much entropion, which is where the eyelids poke inward, which is a common issue with the Sharpe. Um, we're just overall seeing a much healthier puppy. Um, I would say they're overall pretty adaptable. I would say they're about a medium energy dog. They're huge, huge family dogs. They're ex incredibly loyal and incredibly intelligent. And their trainability level is, is so easy. Great. Well, let's get that puppy in your arms. Can you hold her up a little bit? We want to see that cute she is face. She's literally snoring. I don't know if you can hear her. <laughs> And now that one, correct me if I'm wrong, that one is named um, Poppy, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. This is Poppy. And I got to be honest, she is probably my my favorite out of the out of the litter. I know it's terrible. They're, they're asleep and they didn't hear me. <laughs> um, just personality and just her just adorable face. She's just, she's just perfect to me. I just love her. She is adorable. Do you want to maybe give her a rest from the uh, spotlight and we'll get another one on? Now, this one's my favorite. Hopefully the other ones didn't hear me say that. <laughs> this one's little cupcake, right? Yes, he's a male. I know he has a girly name, but he was just so cute. <laughs> <laughs> 
Now he looks to be maybe a little bigger. I don't know if that's because his fur is a little bit, um, you know, more drawn out, but what's the estimated size based on the parent weights for when they're adults? Certainly. Um, so even in a litter of where both your parents are around 35 to 40 pounds, which is uh, the case with these, um, you could still get a puppy that weighs 25 pounds just because you do genetics is kind of it's kind of quirky like that um so you know you have a grandparent that's a cocker spaniel that was 15 20 pounds you can still get that uh when those genetics meet up together and um a question that i get asked a lot is well why does this one have fluffy hair um and i love to answer that so there is a such thing as a bear coat sharpe which is very strongly what these uh this this puppy would resemble um long hair is a recessive gene so one of the parents of this litter is considered fluffy or long hair and the other one's short um and the short hair parent being the male carries a copy of the long hair gene so when each parent has a copy of that gene um, that's how you get this little fluffy guy right here yeah. I love the fluffy gene. I know they're starting to um, introduce it in things like French bulldogs, but um, oh, just so cute. All right. What about that? What about the third one? Sugar cakes. <laughs> Sugar cakes. You would know better than me. Perfect. Yep. And, and she's also available. Yes, and she definitely takes more after the Sharpe look. She is tiny. I feel like she looks kind of big in this uh, video, but She's itty bitty compared to the other one. <laughs> <laughs> now you told me something interesting. You said in in so many years of breeding the mini hippos, you really haven't had any local or Oklahoma buyers. Um, so that must mean you do a lot of deliveries. Um, from a breeder's perspective, can you tell us why you're so comfortable with delivery, um, how it's handled, um, and also you know your trust in Paul Ray to make sure delivery goes smooth. We've met some really great transporters uh, through Paul Raid, and we've done really well with them, and we really enjoy working with them. And we started doing our own deliveries as far as uh, flight nannying and things like that. You can guys can book that through Paul Raid, and um, a lot of times we do a Zoom call, like a personal Zoom call through Paul Raid. And um, so we already kind of get to meet them. You get to like them. They get to like you. Um, and you already kind of know each other. So it's actually wonderful actually getting to meet them in person. I've, I've even had one lady in Chicago, uh, one of my last litters, uh, that, you know, puppy sold through Paul Raid. And she kissed me on the cheek. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> you, you, I still keep in communication with all these people. And um it's wonderful. Yes. It's wonderful to meet to meet them on to get to meet them in person at the airport. So yes. Hey, so we're getting some great questions now from the audience. I appreciate everyone um, participating in that way. Um, we have Jack asking, how do they sleep at night um, as puppies and maybe as they get older? Um, they seem to be doing just fine now. But can you talk about that transition and their personalities um, in terms sure. of sleeping? Mm hmm. Sure. So this puppy pen, um, this is what I always recommend as a puppy is to please get one of these puppy pens. You can get them on Amazon for like $45. We play classical music at night and uh, they tend to stay pretty quiet and pretty quiet after that, after they, sure. they're comfortable. Yeah. That's a great answer. And that's probably exactly what I would recommend as well as someone who's helped raise a puppy and things like that with dogs my whole life. Um, so in terms of the delivery to a trainer, uh, we do do delivery. So what you can do to start that process is either call us um, or you can also click ask about me on the puppy's profile page um, and start the conversation with one of our puppy concierge uh, sales teams members um, and they'll help get you extra information if you have questions that haven't been answered tonight from Jennifer. Uh, we can get you pictures and videos of specific puppies as well. When you're working with Paul Raid as the liaisons and the uh, representatives of our breeders, um, we actually don't schedule you to go be the breeder on hand. That's why we offer these video calls to give you this one-on-one -on -one feel. Uh, we want to make you feel as comfortable as possible. Uh, but quite understandably, since we don't fully know you, we 
can't just be sending anybody over to her house and uh, we just want to keep their uh, privacy and safety as a priority. Um, so that's what these videos are for. But um, once you do make a payment and reserve the puppy, uh, we will get you in contact with Jennifer and we can help schedule that pickup day. And you will be making your payment through a payment platform called PetPay, just so you're familiar with that. Uh, PetPay is going to verify that the payment is real. So it's going to be protecting Jennifer um, as well as everyone involved. Uh, that is part of us bridging the gap with scams because um, we've heard Breeders get fake checks. People use fake credit cards. Uh, but we also want to make sure that your payment is being verified so that you're not getting scammed. Um, and that way, everyone's happy. We do have a list of our uh, value points here. Um, and we do have a call out that 80% of scams um, are through puppy advertisements and four out of five uh, pet advertisements are scams. And that's according to the BBB. So please read our reviews. Go on our YouTube, watch some fun puppy delivery videos, uh, watch some customer testimonials, um, and you can also go on Trustpilot. We have over 4,000 verified reviews on Trustpilot. So uh, we have a lot to offer you guys. We're really excited to get in touch. We have Instagram. We have Facebook. Uh, go ahead and follow us there. Uh, we always try and push out really fun puppy content. Um, we show pictures of our customers that send in pictures of their puppies after they've received them and uh, things like that to so go ahead on our social media and our YouTube and subscribe. We are going to have another Paw Raid Live coming up soon. Uh, we try and have at least one or two of these every month. They're fun. They're exciting. Um, and we know that they're really informational and hopefully give you some peace of mind of who we are and why you should adopt a puppy with Paw Raid. So once again, thanks everyone. Have a good night and give us a call.